Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge Stephanie Boyd at the 187th District Court in Texas. She had a man in the hallway that was speaking to the jurors for her courtroom. And they brought him in, in front of Judge Boyd, and they asked him some questions, and he said he was a federal employee. But what difference does that make? And from what I gathered, and you guys listen in, it sounded like he may have had something to do with the case that these jurors were going to be for. So I'll let you guys be the judge. All right. So my understanding is that you were outside speaking with uh, members of the jury. Is that correct? That's either yes or no. No, no, no. You were outside speaking to the jurors. Yes or no? Nope. Were you outside speaking to the jurors? Yes or no? This is what's going to end up. All right. And what division? All right. Do you have documentation for that? Oh, what is your name? Spell that first name. And last name. Yes. Spell it. And where is your documentation that show you work for the federal government? All right. So you are not allowed to be in this courthouse anymore. You do not have any business here. If you are not, if you are not a witness, a witness, you are not allowed in this courtroom. Do you understand? And you are not allowed in this courthouse. You know that you are not supposed to be speaking with the jurors in the hallway. You were. Those jurors were not asking you any questions. You took it upon yourself to tamper with the jury that is coming up here for jury selection. You are not allowed in this courthouse anymore. Do you understand? No. Do you understand? So do not come back into the courthouse. That means this courthouse. That means the courthouse next door. That is the historical courthouse. Do you understand? All right. All right. Uh, if you can see that he's escorted off the premises. Oh, God bless you, too. So I will speak to all of the defense attorneys when you all come back. But personally, I don't feel comfortable with using this jury as the jury pool because I don't know what was said. My understanding is that he is involved in a case here, not as a witness, not as a party whatsoever, but just as maybe a friend of a friend of a friend of a cousin. All right. Yeah. But um, they're going to bring, if you have an inmate, we will bring them up and we'll do your pleas. All right. All right. And also because. <laughs> and also because, um, because I've been a defense attorney before in a prosecutor. The remaining jurors that are left are going to be jurors 
that have already probably been reviewed and those that are not was selected were sent uh, back to the basement, be called back up. So I'll, I'll speak with the defense attorneys about that and the prosecutors about that as far as whether you all want to do jury selection today or do jury selection tomorrow with a new jury. Okay. So if you all can discuss that. Thank you. Oh, Daniel and Hank, I don't think you all were here. Uh, the yes. person who says that he's a state representative or something with the U.S. government was speaking to the potential jurors. Oh, so if nobody has any objections, I'm going to release those jurors. Okay, sure. You I think that's. <laughs> All right, Miss Compton. Yes, ma'am. All right, with regards to Mr. Jumas. Oh yes. He will be here on the seventeenth. And it's easier for him to do the evaluation if it's in, in court. So if you'll uh, speak with Ms. Ferguson and Mr. Jimmis, we'll have your client brought over on the 17th for him to do the evaluation here. So if you would like to be present, you can. Okay. Um, I'm usually not present, but I appreciate the headset. Sure. And I will keep that off. All right. And the other issue, you were not present, but you were number one for jury trial. However... The person who was here in the gray suit who said that he was with the U.S. government, uh, he Mr. was. Mr. Man. Yeah, he was speaking to uh, the jurors in the hallway. So I don't feel comfortable with using the jury panel that we have. And Judge, um, I'm not quite sure how to handle him. I did talk to Daniel about him and I did make the call before the holidays to the jail. He has been filing all sorts of stuff in this case. I don't know what his relationship is with his family. I don't talk to them. I about I don't I've never spoken to him. Um, he has communicated with me threats that he's gonna sue me in federal court and all kinds of stuff like that. But the thing that troubles me the most and I called the jail to let them know is that uh, he evidently had a an attorney visit on the uh, video visit, not a not a recorded visit, an attorney visit with this guy, okay. with my client. Now, I tried to find out if they had a record of that or how it happened. My client doesn't know. I mean, well, what know. I've done is I've asked that he not be allowed back in the courthouse and the deputy took a photo of him. So somebody can let the sheriff know that he's not to have attorney visits if he's not his attorney. If it's who I'm thinking of, he's also right now a person who is on bond for an aggravated assault. So somebody might want to talk to pretrial services or his bond. All right. So somebody may want to talk to his pretrial services officer. And honestly, the name that he gave me, I don't even believe that's his real name, because he seemed to be stumbling over what his name was. But the deputies did take a photo of him, so I'm sure that's going to be placed at the courthouses, and they can place it at the jail as well. I'm on the Bear County website, pretty easy with the name he's been filing things under. Okay. And he's filed stuff in my And place. what name did he give? It's a... <coughs> is it Henry? Henry. Okay. Whatever that name is, that's his name. All right, so... Before you leave here today, we'll take up that matter with the sheriff's office. All right. Now and I'd, then I'd be happy to get some of them on because I believe he's put it, holding himself out as, as an attorney to, to people, which carries its own set of problems. All right. We will take care of that. So the people who are up for jury trial, is there any objections to the court excusing the jury? We would start with jury selection tomorrow. Is anyone going to have any objection to that? I'm here. Uh, yes, I, I know you're on a plea. All right. All right. So what I'll do is I'll excuse this jury panel. And because usually what ends up happening, if you don't hold your jurors for the morning selection, you will end up with people who have already been through jury selection three or four times. And I don't want anybody to be put at a disadvantage 
because of that. So is there any objection to me excusing the jurors? Yeah. All right. So let me go outside and do that. And they're bringing up your clients. And once they're up, we'll take up the pleas. And I know you have your appointment. So as soon as they bring your person out, we'll take that up. Uh, just give me a moment on that. Let me take care of this first. Hi. Jury tampering is a really big deal. And it doesn't matter if he's a federal employee or not. It's still not allowed. And it sounded like, from what I was gathering, it, that he had something to do with the case or maybe another case, but it doesn't matter. You're not allowed to do that. And who knows what he said? I think Judge Boyd was going to go try and find out what he said to them. But all the jurors had to be excused. It was a complete waste of time for all of those people and the court that was sitting there waiting for them. So that is the reason why you're not allowed. Well, that's not the only reason, but that is a, that's the the outcome of him doing what he did. And, you know, he should have been put in jail. He should have spent a couple days, I think, you know, at least in jail for what he just did. She just kicked him off the property. But I think he should have gone to jail. That's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you next time.